We're back in St. Louis at one of the truly outstanding days and performances in bowling history. Nelson Burton Jr. averaging, holy mackerel. 271. Isn't that something in three games? And he has won the three against some great bowling by Couture, Holman, and Gibson. With the TV average today, 249.6. And the All St. Louis match final is coming up. Total purse, 125,000. And here are the way Ted Hanna was our Hanna's was our alternate from Zanesville, Ohio. Mike Albee was a leader earlier. As we go down the list, John Forst uh, from Lagrange, Illinois. A lot of area bowlers made the finals. Two more boys from St. Louis, born Hop and Wonderland. That's right. Great shooters. And Randy uh, Lightfoot from St. Charles. Yes. So, Dick Weber, you have every reason to be proud as Storm De Vincent was the last to get into the uh, championship round. As we go into the final match here at Dick Weber Lanes, and this championship pair has been extraordinary today. Whew. You know, uh, something I uh, must say, uh, Chris, uh, I remember shaking Bull Burton's hand a couple of times on, a, on the telecast, and uh, the throw now here, Bull Burton's shaking my son's hand, so... Uh, Isn't that something? Another generation, and here's Pete Weber. <laughs> left a four pin on the left lane, and what he needs to do is be as red hot as his shirt, because his opponent has in three games. That's for sure. And he smooth. One of the smooth deliveries that you'll ever see. And what Pete has to uh, not let himself hurry. This happens to all the great professionals. Sometimes they'll hurry up a shot. Thus far, Bo really hasn't. Oh, he does. He knows he, he has the advantage. Yes. Look at that. 271 average for three games. Missed the record by two pins. He just never lets, lets up. He's had now 30 strikes. 30 strikes out of a possible 37 frames, Chris. That's pretty good shooting. You just can't find any better. Especially when uh, it's a live coast-to-coast -coast telecast. Uh, the pressure is there. Sure, the money's important, but to win another title is what uh, Bo is after because he bowls in most of the tournaments, uh, most of the time doing commentary here with me. And uh, when he does get into the finals, it's we bring in our super-duper alternate <laughs> Dick Weber. <laughs> well, that's surprised the fans here. Uh, a 10-pin on the left lane. First solid 10 that he's left. He's left two, uh, two flat 10s, but that's the first solid 10 he's left. Seemed like he picked up a little more speed, causing the pin to rise a little bit and wrap around the neck of the 10-pin. There again, showing you the scores. 278, 279, 257. Incredible. How to shoot spares. These two pros showing you in the first frame and in the second frame how to do it. Now let's uh, take a look at this 21-year-old who is 5 feet 7 inches tall, 125 pounds. I double-checked that one because we skinny guys want to have the exact weight. Pete's at 125. Yeah. Somebody dropped something. And Pete... Wisely. Wisely. Good that, thinking, Pete. I'll have shows, to congratulate him on that. <laughs> that shows maturity. Yes. Now, you must remember, Pete has won two championships. And he strikes here in the establishment where he started it all. And Dick, did you give him much instruction uh, to bring about a stroke like this? No, as well. As as we watch a profile here, Chris, uh, Pete has that extremely high backswing, and I really never gave him that type of advice. He learned to bowl with a six-pound bowling ball, and that's how he created his style. He's good and, good and firm at the foul line, good follow-through. But I'd advise him to jump on this strike right now. Oh, he's high. He's high. 
Well, there's Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Dad with these little specks. It's all right. Uh, well, now that you're 42, Dick, uh, <laughs> sometimes spectacles become important. Oh, uh, you're very nice. <laughs> all right. Pete Weber now going for the six pin gets it. In an all St. Louis final. Well, back in the early 1800s, two fellows left from across the river named Lewis and Clark up the Missouri and made that historic journey. And this is truly a historic city, and it's there's history right here today. What are the odds on two St. Louis natives making it to the finals from a huge field in the lanes of Dick Weber? Mm. <laughs> Another 10 for Nelson. There again, a little bit of speed, and it seemed like he moved a board or two inside where the ball went longer down the lane and never grabbed soon enough to knock out the 10 pin. Now, are conditions changing, you think? Could possibly be, Chris. Viewing it from up here, he had a reason to move in, evidently. So the lanes could be breaking down slightly, and he moved in slightly. Cross lane. Watch how low does it. And like we say, well, how does he do it? Hair flow. <laughs> Taking his time. He, he uh, you know, he's been around long enough, and, and uh, sometimes we, uh, we backfield coaches back here criticize a man for making the move, especially when he's averaging 271. But he has enough background to make that smart move to jump on a young fellow like Pete. And uh, that's part of the sport. That's part of the sport. final match. All St. Louis, Burton, and Weber. Wow. We'll be back after this. Sometimes you get a headache you wouldn't want. And a little fatherly advice. I just advise him to move right just a slight bit. Maybe a couple of boards. Move the, move the spot a couple of boards to the right because his, he's just so far inside, the ball never gets into a good roll. When it hits the pocket, when it does hit the pocket, then it's flat. Here's a 3-6 attempt now. <laughs> All right, 21-year-old Pete. We would also advise him not to get his dauber down. That's because right. Because he had an error there in the fourth frame because there's plenty of time left. He is against the hottest bowler in the United States today. <laughs> right. Nelson Burton. Strike up shooting in the fifth. Nelson was 20 years old when Pete was born. Yes. And he remembers it. You know, I bowled Nelson Burton Jr. when he was 21 years of mm -hmm. age. Luckily beating. In the pocket, a double. Increasing his lead now to 21 pins. You know, well, I, ironically, though, Chris, uh, in the two match games that they uh, faced each other in the finals, uh, during match play, uh, Pete uh, beat Bo Burton both times. And Bo knows that. So mm -hmm. Yeah, you can tell Bo is apprehensive. We know him like a book, <laughs> like a brother. And uh, and we've followed him, uh, needless to say, for 23 years. And let me tell you, he knows that he's in against a tough cookie. Oh, yeah. And vice versa. Pete knows the same. They both respect each other. Mm -hmm. Bagger and Bo, that exhaling, he knows that he's maybe tiring a bit here. This is his fourth game today. So it's a three bagger for Bo. Now, Pete Weber, Dick's son, shooting in the sixth, needs a strike. Of course, you always need a strike, but <laughs> right here, he really needs it. Took his time, slowed down a little uh, bit, got a good roll. Here, here is Pete Weber. Dick, here is Dad. Just follow this <laughs> along. Go ahead. Well, th this is shot in Hawaii here. The, the first picture was six months old, but th then here he is in Hawaii with an exhibition with m uh, myself and my two other sons <laughs> and a daughter and wife. Ah, uh, yeah. Look, look. Hey, 
Mm-hmm. He's ready. All right, now he needs it to double. Call the house manager. Bad break. Bad break. <laughs> that could be... Well, he might remember that 10. Wobbly 10. Yes. Oh, Pete. Pete. He's rushing the fouling, Chris. Yeah, he really and is. And he knows it. He just... Uh... We should tell him we know yeah. he has a lot of speed, but <laughs> don't overdo it, right? Because he's in against a toughie. Nelson Burton Jr. averaging 271. There's Pete's wife. Pressure for her today, too. Gosh, Nicole. Pressure for the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dad. <laughs> Another 10 for Nelson Burton on the right lane. Second solid 10 is Nicole, Nicolette looks on, wife, sissy. There's Katrina. All seems smiles because Daddy's in the lead by uh, 42 pins. And that other magnificent <laughs> face on the screen was Frank Esposito of Paramus, our coordinator. <laughs> he gets always with beautiful people. Classic stylist, Nelson Burton Jr. leading by 42 through seven frames. His opponent, as you see, has had two opens, and that has been a disaster for the 21-year-old. We're in Florissant, Missouri at Dick Weber Lanes. Those two misses, by the way, Chris, are two 10 pins, rushed the shot. Not taking time. You just can't do that in this type of format. One game. Go with a strike in the eighth frame as he tries for his 17th BBA title. Well, we'll determine that when we come back, but right now, a uh, pause for this message. While we were away, Pete Weber, gritty Pete, came back with a double. But Nelson Burton Jr., who is seemingly on his way to his fourth consecutive rec record or uh, victory here today, has just broken a four-game record held by Larry Lobb of 10-21, four games in Kansas City in 1972. Incredible performance by this pro. It's just a professional uh, performance. And I guess uh, in this Olympic year, it's a year to have records broken. And uh, Nelson Burton Jr. has done it. And last night watching the Olympic stick in one of my favorite events, figure skating, the number two Soviet pair in figure skating, you know the music they were skating to? St. Louis Blues. Oh, beautiful. Ah. So you're looking at the man that is the Angle Open champion, his 17th championship, but a record set for four games. He had to win four in order to, in his hometown, win $20,000 in the trophy. He shot a 236 to go along with his other big scores, 278, 279, and 257. So, once again, the winner is Nelson Burton, Jr., and we congratulate our colleague and thank Dick Weber for filling in. Thank you. Stay tuned next for our continuing coverage of the 14th Olympic Winter Games. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies to Hong Kong for more top business centers with three-class Royal Pacific service. A record-setting day. This has been a...